Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 110. So we're just going to continue on with the last couple of tutorials where we're basically building our character mob AI, or sorry, our mob AI into a finite state machine. And we left off, uh, I noticed that uh, things were being called multiple times for our debug statements and the reason is because we have more than one mob in the scene. So if we went ahead and turned off the character generator, or sorry, the mob generator, and we started up, uh, we notice that we're only getting the, the way it was supposed to be. So alive is true, init, alive is true, setup. And that's how we wanted it. So let's head into Mono Develop. And I'm going to come down to my update function that we commented out. And I'm going to take all of the stuff here since it all involves moving our character around or the mob. Uh, I'm going to move this all into uh, a different function called move. And I'll put it right above the on trigger. So private void, and I'll just call it move. Now we're going to want to call this function in each state that the character is allowed to move in. So I'm going to come up here and uh, first, I'm going to have them move in all the states, so I'll just paste this in, move, I'm just going to leave a space there, attack, I'm going to allow them to move there too, and then flee. I'm also going to copy the debug messages, just so I know that they're in there. And we'll also have to come down to our on trigger enter and take the comment out that we have for the start coroutine. And that looks to be about it. So let's go fire it up and test it out. Now, you can already see one problem we're going to have is that when we leave his collider, he's probably going to continue running in a straight line again. But we'll fix that. So we start off, I'm going to make sure I have him targeted. And make sure I'm outside of his collider, which I am. So I'll just turn around, run in. He starts chasing me. Now I'm going to run. Uh, let's try to get out of his collider. So I'll just continue to run in a straight line. I should be out now. So if I turn, uh, you'll notice he just keeps running in a straight line again. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll head back into Mono Develop, and I'm going to add another state here, Retreat. And all I want this state to do is basically run back to his spawn point. So I'll add it in down here. It really doesn't matter what order you keep uh, have these in, but uh, I'm just a little anal about it. So case state dot retreat. I'm going to call the function retreat. We'll have to make that break. And then I'll come down here. I'm just going to copy flee. And rename it to retreat. Change the debug so I know what he's doing. And I'm going to call move, but I, I'm going to change the target. So instead of uh, comparing it to the, the player, we're going to want to go to his original spawn point. Now, since we have all our mobs in game spawning under, like as a child of a spawn point, we're going to cache where that uh, spawn point is, or at least get a reference to that spawn point. And when it's time to retreat, we'll just run back to it. So I'm going to come up to the top here, and I'm going to make another private variable, and I'll just do it right here. It will be of type transform, and I'm just going to call it parent. Well, actually, let's call it home, because that's where he runs to. 
So I'm going to come down into my knit now. And right underneath uh, the My Transform, I'm going to say Home is equal to Parent. I guess it would be Transform dot parent dot transform and then if we go down to our on trigger exit instead of setting the target to null we're going to set the target to be equal to home and I'm also going to comment out this alive equals false for now and let's go ahead and see if that works. So I'll start it up. Actually, it's not going to work on our Dungeon Guardian because he doesn't have a parent. He's not under a spawn point. So for now, I'll just turn him off. Or better yet, just create a game object. I'll create an empty. And I'm just going to call it home. And I'll put an underscore in front of it. The name really doesn't matter. But what I want to do is take it. Uh, let's see, we'll just drag it onto the Dungeon Guardian. Yes, I know I'm losing the prefab. Uh, let's activate the Dungeon Guardian. And I'm going to select Home, and I'm just going to reset it. So now it's at the exact spot where the Dungeon Guardian is. And I'm just going to drag it out. And then I'll put the Dungeon Guardian under it. Great. So now if we start it up, we should get no errors. That's fine. I'm going to zoom in on my player a little bit. I want to zoom out some so I can see what's going on. I'll just select home, uh, more importantly my dungeon guardian. And let's get him to chase us. So he's running. And he stops. And it's because we're not actually going into the retreat method. So that's easy to fix. We can go up to uh, right here, attack, and we'll just say retreat. Now, of course, this method or this line here is actually only going to be called on certain mobs. Maybe only certain mobs are allowed to retreat. Uh, some fight to the death, and maybe some, when they get below 50% health or 25% health or whatever, or for whatever reason, they have to retreat. This will be when this line is called. Other than that, it just stays on attack and it just keeps going around and around. So let's head back into Unity and we'll give it a try. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Oops, I don't want to move my guy around. I'm just going to start it up. And I'm going to run through the collider to get the guy to chase me. And let's get out of the collider. And there's going to be some times where he doesn't run back. And the reason why is because of our cushion that we set for uh, the rotation. So if it falls in between those rotations, it's not going to rotate towards where it's supposed to go. And we'll have to figure out a better way to address that. But there's a quick fix we can use just to you know, get things working. So I'm going to get him to chase me again. I'll run this way. And he's not going to run exactly back to the spot. He's going to run within melee range of the spot. But as you see, the first time he did get stuck. I'll see if I can get him stuck one more time. And there we go. I'm out of his collider and he's not rotating. Uh, so if we go down, let me see here. If we go down to our move... It's right here where we're trying to rotate. It gets the uh, the direction. Remember, it's either a positive or a negative number. And we're saying if it's greater than the rotation damp, then turn right. If it's less than the rotation damp, turn left. Uh, else, don't turn at all. And if we come up and actually look at the rotation dampening we set up, I'm just going to shrink that down. And this. Uh, we have the rotation dampening set up 0.3. So 30% to each side which is really quite big. It's that's like 60% of, you know, the whole you know area that it can look forward to. So we and it also affects in behind him as well. So we'll probably want to look at a different way to address that. But for now we're just going to add a really quick fix. 
since he's retreating, I'm just going to come in and say my transform dot look at, and I'm just going to tell it to look at the target right away. So basically it's one, one frame. It's going to look at the target, so it'll automatically be lined up with it, and he's just going to run. So let's get him to chase me. There he goes. Away we go. And I'm going to actually going to zoom in on him a bit. I'm going to click off of him so you can kind of see what direction he's facing. Then I'm just going to try to get out of his collider. And you see how he instantly just turns around and runs the other way. And I'll, I'll try to keep facing him so we can actually see in game, he just instantly turns around one frame, which is fine because he is retreating. Uh, it's not the exact behavior I want. I actually want him to have to turn, but I I don't want to revisit the logic that we used to have turning going on just yet. I want to keep uh, going forward a little bit because there is you know an easy fix for it. And I think that pretty much covers everything that we have so far in a finite state machine or that we had before we created a finite state machine as far as the movement goes and the ability to target when they enter the the uh, collider and when to leave. I'm just going to shrink those down because I know they're working. Uh, move, like I said, we will have to revisit, but we know it's working right now. I guess the last thing I'm going to want to do is quickly define what each one of these states means and do nothing. Uh, make sure that everything we need is here. Assign the values to the things we need. Find the player. And we're probably going to change it because originally I had it designed that you got your target in the search update. But I'm probably going to switch it now since we're just grabbing it automatically on the on trigger enter uh, to something like decision making. You know, do I move forward or do I use my range attack? Or do I use my magic attack? Do I want to run forward to get ready for my melee attack? Now, there's lots of things we could are going to have to decide. But instead of changing right now, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, we are going to have to come back and revisit this several times. But right now we, we've got a step in there. It's at least a placeholder. Attack the player. Retreat to spawn point. Run to the nearest spawn point with another mob. And that one should be fun. And there shouldn't actually be a comma there either. So I'm just going to quickly do one more save. Give a quick check in Unity if there's no errors, which there aren't. Then I'm going to call this one done, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.